Welcome to Raiders Unplugged, where we're bridging the gap from what you saw out on the field to what was really going on inside the locker room. I'm Kate Longworth. The Raiders had a year of undeniable success, in part to some key additions, such as Jacoby Ford and Quinton Groves. I had the opportunity to sit down with these two for a candid conversation at the public house. So as the silver and black move forward with new head coach Hugh Jackson, we take a few steps back with this unfiltered look at the Raiders 2010 season. Well, guys, this is your first chance to kind of reflect on the season that was. The Raiders finished 8-8, eight and eight, undefeated in division play. What stands out to you as both your high and low of the season? Oh, uh, man, the um, thing that stands out to me most of all is we're a team. Um, I mean, in every sense of the word, special teams, offense, and defense. So many times this year when one team wasn't doing so good, the other team was picking them up. You know, Jacksonville game, our offense kept us in it. You know what I mean? Um, Arizona game, uh, my special teams wasn't in it. Defense and offense kept kind of picked up the slack. You know what I mean? And then against uh, KC, the first game, our special teams won it with a big kickoff return. And it's just, man, and then Janikowski kick at the end. Uh, one word, team. How about for you? Man. What was the high spot? High spot was the way we finished, I would have to say. Um, you know, they'd probably say the Oakland Raiders before probably would have laid down and quit, you know, when things started going bad. And, but, you know, I just saw a team that kind of came together even closer. And uh, you talk about a great team, and part of that was the new guys joining the team, the new kids on the block, the, the new rookie class. What was it about your rookie class that made you guys so strong? You guys became leaders in the locker room at a young age, but then obviously you were making it happen out on the field as well. You know, I think we just, we, we kind of took into consideration that, you know, we can come here and just try to help this organization out as much as possible. And, um, you know, we just kind of put on ourselves, to, you know, be, just to go out there and try to contribute any way that we can, whether it was just offense, special teams, defense, you know, any way that we can. And it's a long season, mm -hmm. but a lot of ups and downs, a lot of great games out there, a lot of close games out there. What game stands out to you? The game that stands out to me, because I was a part of it, was the, um, the first Kansas City game. To win it in overtime in front of the home crowd, sold out, um, that's what stands out to me that, hey, this team is really, really for real, man. And to see the black hole like it was and see Raider Nation come out and support us like they did, man, it was amazing. And you can't talk about that game without this guy right here. You literally stole that game. I thought the ball was in the Chiefs' hands, and somehow you come out with it. You find yourself in the end zone a couple times. Take me through that game from your point of view. Um, you know, I, that game just... It just all just started coming in, just coming in perspective for us. You know, as soon as, from that first kickoff of the second half, um, you know, just to Jason trusting me and, you know, just kind of just putting the ball just where I can get it. Um, you know, and I was just out there relaxed, having fun, and, you know, just playing football. You know, you know that's something I've been doing since I was young. And, I, you know, I was, out, I was out there and I was able to get a chance to show what I can do. And then that's what I went out there and did. And you guys joining the Silver and Black this year, but did you feel what the team has gone through in years past? When you were growing up against San Diego, at San Diego, and the team has a chance to sweep the Chargers for the first time since 2001, <laughs> could you feel the stress of that game and the height that it was at? The, the, the ground of the San Diego sweep thing was huge. That's why I said we didn't feel any pressure. We just went out there and played. And then the result is what it was. We won the game and swept the charge. And another div division opponent you guys took care of, yeah. of course, was Denver. Yeah. At Denver. Yeah. That game, I think you were on the sidelines jumping up on down on benches <laughs> every time Darren McFadden had the ball. You, of course, worked next to the run DMC. So both of you just take some time to talk about being his teammate and seeing his breakout season unfold this year. Um, I think it's been great. You know, that's a guy who, who definitely worked hard in the offseason, you know, to get where he's at. Um, you know, just that tenacity that he plays with, you know, it's unbelievable. And we know 
as a team, you know, and as wide outs. All we have to do is give him a little room, just a little crease, and, you know, when, when he gets to that second level, you know, he kind of take care of business on himself. Um, but, you know, just to be out there playing with that guy, um, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun, and I enjoy it a lot. Can you do that stiff arm like him? I can't. Definitely can't uh, do that stiff I, arm. I really, I really can't do his stiff arm, um, <laughs> but... He's a guy that, man, to go through what he's been through the first two years in the league, you know, injury riddled seasons both years, and um, come back and answer the way he did, man, it's amazing. It speaks advice for the person and the man that he is to be where he's at now and moving forward in his career, a thousand yard rusher. Um, I think he's like the second or third leading receiver on our team. So he's a guy that, you know, he can hurt you in so many different ways. Just when you think you have Darren balled it up, he catch a screen pass and go 90 yards. Or he, you think he bought him up, he can have uh, a power wall play, you know what I mean? 18 Bob or 18 Wanda, whatever they call it. <laughs> <laughs> he can have that. And uh, just like he said, the littlest of crease, he can ski through that and then take it to the house. And another guy who worked real hard this season to try and make the Raiders his team, Jason Campbell. Yeah. What, what, you know Jason, you guys go back. What type of guy is Jason? Because I think that was one thing the Raider Nation was struggling to get to know him this year. So what kind of guy is he? And then we'll talk about the football player here. One word describes Jason. Resilient. Resilient, resilient, resilient. Man, to go, like, like I, I want to say this is his, I don't even know the number anymore. The number of coordinators he's been through since he's been in the league and same way he was in college, you know, so he he was used to it and I, I knew the person Jason was going to be and the quarterback that he was going to be, but it just took time, you know, because he had to get used to the situation and kind of settle down. He, I think he felt a lot of pressure coming into it. Okay, I have to be the savior of this franchise and we, I think a lot of us did a great job of sitting him down and saying, no, nah, Jason, we have your back. You don't have to be the... the no all say all do all, you know, because you have these guys that have your back. You have these brothers that have your back now that to say, okay, I'm not in this thing alone. And once that burden got lifted off his shoulders, uh, the, the proof's in the pudding. It speaks for itself. We, we started improving week by week by week by week. We didn't need Jason to just go out there and dominate a game, be a Peyton Manning or be a Drew Brees or be a Tom Brady. We just needed Jason to go out there and manage the game, make the plays you're supposed to make, and everything else was going to fall in place, and that's what he did. And for you, what was it like? You're, you're at the pros now. You get here, okay, this is my quarterback. Six quarters into the season, he's not your quarterback. <laughs> what was that like for the offense coming together and trying to gel around that when you had Jason in a few games, Bruce in a few games? Well, I think the thing that helped us out the most was that we were used to both quarterbacks. So whenever it was a quarterback change, um, you know, it really didn't change too much for the wide receivers um, or the running backs or the line. You know, it's just, you know, just a different person throwing the ball. But, um, you know, I felt like we were all very comfortable with either quarterback that went into the game. And, you know, that makes it a lot easier on us so we don't have to stress about um, do we have this timing down because, you know, Bruce is the type of guy, if he sees something, you know, you go back and talk to him, then he'll be like, okay, well, I'm just going to throw this ball here and trust that you're going to be there. And, you know, with Jason, you know, Jason's different as the way we work with him after practice, and that's how we get timing down with him. So, you know, it's just different strategies that you have to take to go and um, just get used to each quarterback. And um, I, know, I don't think it was a problem at all dealing with either one of them. You know, I love both of them to death, and you know, they're good quarterbacks for this franchise. What about their personalities? Because they both bring, like you say, different things to the table, but they are different guys. <laughs> Can you just describe Bruce and Jason? Well, Bruce, Bruce is a, uh, a fiery a fiery guy, man. Bruce is a guy that loves the game and it shows through his emotion. Jason is more of a it's calm. A calm down, it's laid back, sit down. Cool. I'm, I'm too cool for school kind of guy, man. You know, uh, but like, you know what you're gonna get out of both of them. Neither one of them changed. Bruce is gonna be the one uh, yelling, cheering you, high five, jumping in the stands. Whereas Jason throw a touchdown pass, he throws little two fingers up and run to the sideline. <laughs> so, so uh, that's the, those are the kind of guys you have, and it does great for this team because this is a team full of personalities, and uh, we all mesh so well together. Is that how you describe the two of them? That's definitely how I describe both of them. You know, Bruce, he's, you know, he'll he'll be like, I'm a different cat in the game, man. I'm like, yeah, Bruce, I know you're real wiry. You know, you won't just get down on the hit. You'll actually take the hit. 
you know, Jason, we still got to work on him sliding, but he has the worst. He, he got, got the worst slide I ever seen. <laughs> he did use them legs a lot more these last few games, though. But um, well, you know, that comes with running with me after practice, so <laughs> take a little credit for that. What is it like to be a football player on Mr. Davis's team? <laughs> uh, most people, when they, when they, when they, when they see you, and they, that's the first question they ask you. How's out Davis? Is he is he really that like that? Is right this? But the fact of the matter is, Al is a a student of the game. He's a student of the game who only demands the best. He wouldn't push you if he know you didn't have it in you. You know, and that's what he demands. He demands everything you have on every single play. So, and he's somewhat of a. I want I don't want to put the label on him yet, but he's somewhat of a prophet because he sees things before you do. You know, and that's that's the thing that you have to take from him is that if he tells you something, don't don't take offense to it, don't get mad at it. But he's been he's probably forgotten more football than me and him have ever played. It's, it's great playing for him actually, because you even though when we came into the season we didn't have the respect that we have now, to put the silver and black on is just a different swagger you walk around with to say, okay, I got the silver and black on. And I know what these guys stand for. So it's just a different, you got a little, the shoulders get a little bit bigger, you got a little more pep in your step when you put the seven in the back, but it, it's great, man. It is, a, it's, 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 I'm, I'm getting speechless just talking about it. So I, th I think it's great. Jacoby getting the test. I definitely can tell, um, you know, just, just to hear how many Raider fans are out there. Um, you know, prime example, when we played at Arizona, I felt like it was more Raider fans there than actual Arizona fans. In San Diego? And in San Diego, too. And, um, you know, just to have so many fans even back at home and even outside the U.S., like in U.K., like I had people actually tweet me from the U.K., you know, just say, hey, we're from U U.K., you know, just showing support. And, um, you know, just to have that, that type of love and, you know, just to feel that atmosphere whenever we do come in the black hole. You know, those people, they love their football out here. You know, they love their Raiders. And, you know, just to be able to put on that silver and black and, you know, know all that tradition, you know, I definitely think, I definitely think it's a great honor to play out here. Welcome back to Raiders Unplugged. After finishing the season at 500 and just falling shy of the playoffs, Al Davis pulled the plug on Cable. Tom Cable was relieved of his head coaching duties, and I was actually with Quentin Groves and Jacoby Ford when this happened and informed them of the news. The two recalled many memories of their former head coach, including one of his final addresses to the team the night before the season finale in Kansas City. He was probably one person that always believed in us, no matter whether it was a win or as a loss. If it was a loss, you know, he told me, yeah, you know, it's thanks to be here, sitting like this, but, you know, it's still a great team in this room. You know, he always just kept saying that repeatedly and repeatedly. You know, I just think that just kind of instilled in our heads. And, you know, just that last measure that he that he said though in that, that last team meeting, um, you know, it, it touched me. You know, I was, I was like, man, I'm kind of ready to go out there and play right now. You know, just from the highlight video to everything he was saying, you know, about not being losers and, you know, just bringing this this Raider mentality back to the um, NFL now. What was Hugh like, and what did he bring to the game plan for the Raiders? <laughs> Whole different attitude. Hugh Jackson. He loves the Love win. you, Hugh. Definitely love you, Hugh. <laughs> um, that guy loves to win. You know, he doesn't like losing. And just the, his mentality that he brings, you know, is just like us. You know, he, he talks junk to the players. Um, you know, he doesn't care who lines up. You know, on the other side of that ball, you know, he always says we're going to kick there. <laughs> but, you know, can't say that, but, you know, that's just his mentality. You know, he always, he wants to go out there and play with a high motor. But, you know, he always wants us to have a perfect game, you know. And he doesn't want us to turn the ball over or anything. He just wants us to go out there and play for the other room, like he always says. He's like, those guys are going to play for you, so you need to go out there and play for them. Because, you know, everybody's your brother. And that's always a message that he told us. You know, every, we are, we're all in this together. And, you know, I definitely think that that stuck with the offense, you know, that triggered on down to the defense just as well. Because, you know, we all play together and, you know, we just all support. You had your impression of him too, it sounded like. Yeah, me and you kind of have our heated battles. Um, we, it started in uh, OTAs and mini camp. We would go jaw back and forth. But I knew, uh, me, we played you when I was in Jacksonville. Um, 
We played Baltimore. Uh huh. And um, I noticed this little guy just talking, just talking, talking from the other side. I, I made a, I, I had ran down and made a play on the sideline. I was just talking junk, and I, went, I see this little ball guy keep bringing it, punk. We gonna keep bringing it. I was like, I said, all right, whatever. But they can't make a long story short. Uh, we kind of come to Oakland, and he's off as a coordinator. And I was like, that was you? He's like, yeah, yeah. So we had our little battles, and uh, I think him and Tyvon Branch go at it the most. <laughs> I, I don't kind of take the fans. I remember watching that at training camp up in Napa. You see him, and you're like, where is this yelling coming from? And then you see this little body, like, he just come up from and so what is he saying out there? Take the fans to, into well, if, that. If, if you have, we have to censor some of it. Got to censor. <laughs> Got to censor all of it. If it's if it's if an offensive lineman jumps off sides, give me another offensive lineman. Okay, that's that's a good part. Um, what else? Defense. I hope y'all ready today. 52. I'm coming right at you. 92. Uh, we're gonna block you into the ground. 93. We're gonna make you jump off sides all day. Get him, get him, get him, get him, get him, 20. Get him, get him, Cole. Get nine, get, get 21. Get 21. Oh, wow. Get 21. <laughs> and then, God forbid, somebody, if, if one of his quarterbacks completes a pass, oh, it's over. Yeah. It is over. Especially on Namdi, it's over. <laughs> oh, he quit. Oh, he quit. He gave up. Went. Mr. Pro Bowl is taking it in today. <laughs> it's, it's, it's crazy. He does stuff like that, but it's all in good fun. And then one of the common themes I noticed the final game in Kansas City, a lot of the words players were saying was bittersweet. Mm. Describing this season as bittersweet because it is one of the best finishes this franchise has seen in years. But undefeated against division <laughs> opponents, and we're sitting here. You're not in practice right now. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's bittersweet to know that you can be so dominant and yet not be prepared for the Jets, you know what I mean, or the Ravens, whoever they're going to play. Um, but <clears throat> it goes back to early in the season. You, you invest those wins, those close wins, those Arizonas, those uh, San Francisco's, those wins like that. So we won't be sitting here having this conversation right now. You invest those early in the season, so when you go back to go late in the season, when you drop one or drop two, it's okay because you've already invested early in the season. So that's why we say it's bittersweet because we know we're going to make some noise in the playoffs if we would have got in. We're going to make a lot of noise. And people didn't, uh, if you check this, you can go back and check the stat. And our coaches told us that after every team that plays us, the next week they lose. <laughs> why is that? What effect does the Raiders have on everyone? I'll probably say just the physicality that we come out there and play with. You know, a lot of teams probably get more beat up playing the Raiders because, you know, we know we want to go out there and impose our will on them, you know, any way that we can, you know, especially physically. You know, we, all, we always want to out-physical any team that we play because, you know, we know if we do that, then we have a great chance of winning. And especially when all three phases of the game are kicking, um, uh, clicking, I mean, um, offense, defense, and special teams, you know, we're a tough team to beat. And, you know, whenever we do play together and just pull on that rope together, um, you know, I don't really think it's, you know, anybody out there that can, um, you know, just play with us as long as we're out there playing with playing for each other. So are the elements in place, are the components there for this team to be in the playoffs next year? I would say so. I would say so. I, I think we are. You know, our, you, you have a, just to touch on a few areas, you have a Pro Bowl punter, a Pro Bowl kicker, um, a defense with two of the best defensive tackles in the game. Um, Young and up-and-coming linebackers. Our secondary is probably one of the best that has been around in a while. Um, Offensive-wise, offensive line is, we have an experienced yet young offensive line. You know, Jared Vidal at left tackle. Um, and then you have, uh, uh, yeah, then you have Sam Satelli. Then you have uh, Langston Walker, who's been in the league for a while, as one with Cooper Carlisle. Tight end, Pro Bowl tight end. Um, Pro Bowl kick returner, you know. Um, you know, receivers, young, but still very hungry and still a learner. You know, Lewis Murphy, Jacoby Ford, you know what I mean? Running back, two of the best, Thunder and Lightning, they're probably, they're going to be a dynamic duo in years to come. So, and you have a fullback that mismatches with safeties. 
<laughs> so <laughs> you, now you, uh, that's the whole team in a nutshell. So you 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 can you can say, man. I, I mean, I'm, we're thinking we're not next year. We're not thinking playoffs. Honestly, God, we're not thinking playoffs. We're only thinking one thing, and that's that's world championships because we have all the elements in place and we have the team in place to do it. And you called Mr. Al Davis a prophet. He has mm -hmm. these visions of what's coming. What's your vision for the Raiders next season? My vision of the Raiders next season. Good question. It's not hard, but it's a good question because you don't want to, you ain't got to know how to word this answer. <laughs> I don't think my notes have anything. Uh, I know. I'm just trying. Let me see. How should I word this? I'm going to let the rookie go first, and I'll answer that. That's fair enough. You have to do that. A little hazy <laughs> here. My vision is I think we're going to be a very prosperous team next year. I like that. I feel like we're going to be, you know, a force to be reckoned with. And I think we can just take this, take a lot of learning from this whole year, you know, to know that, you know, we did, there were some things that we did leave out there that we can definitely go back and fix for next year. And, um, you know, those games that we should have had in the beginning of the year, I don't think we'll take those for granted anymore. So uh, my vision, um, look out for the, for the 2011 Raiders. That's what I'll probably say. I couldn't say it better myself. That's why I let the rookie go first. Uh, yeah, exactly what he said. Yeah, rookie. <laughs> Just one more day of it. Nah, he got three games. He got three games. Next year, before he's in, the rookie title's over. Oh, I see. Yeah, exactly what he said. Um, Pieces are in place. People are in place. We just have to win those games that we have to win. Look out for the 2011 race, like you said. And so the chapter closes on the Raiders 2010 season. Thank you to Jacoby Ford and Quentin Groves for providing us with an up-close and personal look inside the silver and black. For everyone at Comcast Sportsnet, I'm Kate Longworth. Thanks for joining us on Raiders Unplugged. We'll see you next season.